Well, good morning, everybody. Praise God. This is the day that the Lord has made. I'm so glad you could join me today on this wonderful day. Praise God. What a beautiful day in the veil today in Louisville, Kentucky. My God. Amen. Summer is here. We thank God for that. We give God praise. Like I said, I'm Glenn Arrechion, and I want to remind you always of the words of the late great Pentecostal pioneer, R.W. Schambach. You ain't got no trouble. All that you need is faith in God. Faith in God is the greatest force in the universe. Well, so glad that you're here with me today. I want you please to, to tell your friends about this uh, teaching today and share it if you can on your timeline and the Lord will bless you. We give God praise for your life. Well, before we go any further, let's go into today's announcements. Praise God. Now, this week, I'm going to be teaching you on the subject of... Whoop, sorry, got the wrong one. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. On the subject of... Uh, Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. And uh, you will see this uh, play out over the next couple of days. Praise God. Amen. And don't forget, Wednesday we will have prayer coach. And uh, if you haven't subscribed to our, amen, uh, <clears throat> YouTube channel, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the notification bell. So that every time we go live, you can be told that we are going live. Praise God. If you are not a partner with us, we would love for you to become one of our faithful, prayerful, and financial partners that help us to take the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ around the world. This week, I will be in California for a week, and I need you to pray for me. And let's believe God for a great and mighty move of God. Now, some of you can sow $15, $20, $50, dollars a month, whatever it is that God puts on your heart. And whatever currency of choice that you use, amen, you can become one of our partners. No seed is too small and no seed is too great. And you will receive a special gift for us from us every month, an MP3 message only for our partners. So if you want to become one of our partners, praise God, just uh, send me a message or go to my, go to the, to, to the um, <clears throat> online, glenorecchion.org forward slash partner, and uh, you can choose the currency of your choice and so monthly. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Glory be to God. Well, with that said, everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome. I didn't put the um, uh, chat on, so I can't see who's talking today. But on whatever platform that you're watching today, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you. So let's open our Bible, please, to the book of Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. Let's bow our head and let's pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for the word of the living God. Spirit of God, I'm asking you today that you will think through my mind and that you will speak through my lips. Thank you for these, your wonderful people that God used to hear, mind to understand, and heart to receive the word of the living God. Everybody say amen. Matthew chapter 16. Look in your Bible, please. Matthew chapter 16. And Jesus is going to tell us something important here. Matthew chapter 16, ladies and gentlemen. Look in your Biblions. Praise God. And let's read from verse 1. The Pharisees also with the Sadducees. I want you please to underline that in your Bible. There were two religious groups. All right. And they had specific beliefs that were different from each other. The Pharisees also with the Sadducees came and tempting or testing desired him that he would show them a sign from heaven. I need you please to underline it in your Bible that he would show them a sign from heaven. He answered and said to them, when it is evening, you say it will be fair weather. For the sky is red, and in the morning it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. O ye hypocrites, I need you please to underline in your Bible. O ye hypocrites, you can discern the face of the sky, but you cannot discern the signs of the times. 
<coughs> I need you to underline that in your Bible. You cannot discern the signs of the times. A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. And there shall no sign be given unto it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. I need you to underline in your Bible. And he left them and departed. And when his disciples were come to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. Then Jesus said unto them, now this is where we get our uh, title today, our heading today, take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. So Jesus warns us to beware, to take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. So that tells you, Jesus is very specific, that there are, there is what is known as the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of the Sadducees. And the reasoned among themselves, saying, it is because we have taken no bread. Which when Jesus perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little faith, why reason ye among yourselves, because you have brought no bread? Do you not yet understand, neither remember, the five loaves of the five thousand, and how many baskets you took up? Neither the seven loaves of the four thousand, and how many baskets you took up? How is it that you do not understand that I spake it not to you concerning bread, but that you should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees? Now look at verse 12 now, and I need you to underline verse 12. Then understood they how he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. So what I, before we go any further, before we expound on anything else today, I need you to write this down, ladies and gentlemen, that here in this context, leaven equals doctrine. I need you to write it down. So underline in your Bible, the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of the Sadducees is a reference to the doctrine to the dogma, to the teaching of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. That came straight out of the mouth of Jesus. All right? All right, now let's go to Mark chapter 8. Mark chapter 8, and look in your Bible, Mark chapter 8 and verse 14 till verse 17. Thank you, Lord. Mark chapter 8, verse 14 till verse 17. Now the disciples had forgotten to take bread, neither had they in the ship with them no more than one loaf. And he charged them, saying, now watch what Jesus says now, Take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, and of the leaven of Herod. And of the leaven of what? Herod. So I need you please to underline now. Now, this is being amplified. Jesus says, take Heed and beware of the leaven of Herod of uh, the Pharisees and of the leaven of Herod. So, if you combine these two chapters together, we will see three leaven or three doctrines or three dogmas. What are they? It is the leaven. They are the leaven of the Pharisees, the leaven of the Sadducees, and the leaven of Herod. We can say this. We can say this way that. The doctrine of the Pharisees, the doctrine of the Sadducees, and the doctrine of Herod. So, what was Jesus saying here? Look in your Bible, please. Let's go to now to Luke chapter 12 and verse 1. Luke chapter 12 and verse 1. <clears throat> in the meantime... When an innumerable multitude of people had gathered together so that they trampled one another, he began to say to his disciples, first of all, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. 
So underline that in your Bible. The leaven of the, of the Pharisees here, Jesus is expanding it for you, expounding it upon for you. He says the leaven of the Pharisees, which is what? Hypocrisy. As a matter of fact, if you read your Bible, and if time permit uh, this week, we will go through this. When you go to, uh, let's go to Matthew chapter 23. Look at this now. Then spake, verse 1, Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore whatsoever the bid you observe, that observe and do, but you... But do not ye after their works, for they say, but they do not. That is what a hypocrisy is. They say something, but they do not do it. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be mourned, and lay them upon men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. Now, what I want you to do here by verse 4, write the word legalism legalism all right so 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 far we've got the teachings or the doctrines of the pharisees which is what you have got hypocrisy and you've got legalism all right now so i want you to write this down beware of the leaven of the pharisees beware of the leaven of the sadducees and beware of the leaven of herod and over the next few days we will decipher what exactly these are now in the bible the term leaven refers to doctrine, like we've just seen here. Also, it refers to sin. Okay, sin and compromise. Now, remember the Bible tells you in the book of Galatians chapter 5 and verse 9, a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. All right, now, <clears throat> so leaven is not just a symbol of doctrine, but it is also a symbol of sin. This is why Jesus' body, a sinless body, was typified in the unleavened bread. Not leavened bread, but unleavened bread, which means sinless body. Amen. All right, so let me give you this now. Sin is also likened to or associated, associated with the word leaven. Now, how is sin like leaven? Leaven is a substance like yeast that when you put into bread dough, spreads throughout the whole dough and make the thing to rise. Yes? Now, <clears throat> this enables bread to be puffy. All right? And this is why in the scripture, sin is compared to leaven. Why? Right, it's done. Because sin grows relentlessly. Sin grows relentlessly. If you do not deal with it, it will grow. If you don't deal with sin in your church, it will grow. Are you listening? If you do not deal with sin in your own life, it will grow and amplify. All right? <clears throat> so sin grows relentlessly. Number two, I want you to please write this down. Sin spreads insidiously. All right? Now... It, it, it contaminates not just you, but others. In Romans chapter 5 and verse 12, look in your Bible, please. Romans chapter 5 and verse 12. So sin grows relentlessly, all right? And if you want a scripture reference for that, let's go to James. Thank you, Jesus. Book of James, sin grows relentlessly. Book of James chapter 1, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to read from verse um, 13. Let no man say that when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bring forth death. That's why we said to you, sin grows relentlessly. Number, number two, we said to you that sin spreads insidiously. Romans chapter 5, or it contaminates. All right, not just you, but others. This is, this is why you've got, 
You cannot tolerate sin. All right? <clears throat> Romans chapter 5, please. And look at what verse 12 says. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that or in whom all have sinned. Now, ladies and gentlemen, sin spreads insidiously and contaminates others. And number three, sin, the sin of pride, just like leaven, will puff up. Are you listening? All right, let's go to <clears throat> First Timothy chapter 3. First Timothy and chapter 3. First Timothy and chapter 3. Look in your Bible, please. Hallelujah. Now, verse 6 says, uh, talking about that we shouldn't give uh, uh, responsibility to a novice. Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he falleth into, what? <clears throat> Condemnation of the devil. Are you listening? All right, so we need to be aware of these things, ladies and gentlemen. Now, <clears throat> so, Leaven is a type of sin. Leaven is a type of doctrine. Now, let's go to a false teaching. By the word doctrine, I want you please to write the word false teaching. Now, this is why Paul was very vehement in Galatians chapter 5. Let's go to Galatians chapter 5. Look in your biblicals. Galatians chapter 5. Thank you, Jesus. Now, you know that the Galatian epistle is the most combative epistle that the Apostle Paul wrote, and he was writing to refute legalism. Are you listening? Entering into the church. And so, in Galatians chapter 5, ladies and gentlemen, look at verse 9. Well, we're going to read, we're going to read from verse... Um, <clears throat> 6. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. You did run well. You began in the Spirit, as you'll find in the book of Galatians, all right, chapter 3. <clears throat> all right, verse 3. Are you so foolish? Having begun in the Spirit, are you now made perfect by the flesh? So these people began by faith and then reverted to the flesh. And Paul said, no, 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 no. You got to stay in the spirit. You got saved by faith and you will be sanctified by faith. Now, let's keep on reading, please. Verse, <clears throat> verse uh, 7, you did run well. Who did hinder you? Well, it was the Judaizers that you should not obey the truth. This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. In other words, you reverting back to the law did not come from Jesus. You reverting to legalism, legalism did not come from Jesus. He says, a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. This is what false doctrine does. All right? It creates chaos everywhere. Are you listening to me now? So, leaven, number one, is a type of sin. Number two, leaven is also what? A type of doctrine and false teaching. Also, we know that leaven is a symbol of compromise. Now, let's go back to Matthew chapter 16. And we will decipher this before we explain to you what are the leaven of the Pharisees, the leaven of the Sadducees, and the leaven of Herod. Now, follow along now. Matthew chapter 16, ladies and gentlemen. Praise God. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. The Pharisees, I want you please to underline it in your Bible, and the Sadducees came, tempting him, desiring him, that he would show them a sign of, from heaven. They were looking from a sign from heaven. Now, why is that in the Bible here? 
There's nothing in the Bible by accident. God was not trying to f make this book a bigger book for you to read. No, everything is there for a purpose. The scripture says the Pharisees and the Sadducees came tempting him and desiring of him that he would show them a sign from heaven. Why? Because at that time, in the mind of the Jews, specifically in reference to the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they had this belief that they call messianic miracles, that they would know and be able to identify the Messiah by four specific miracles that they call, these four miracles are the four signs that will indicate to them that Messiah is in the midst, Messiah is in the flesh. And they call them Messianic miracles. Now, these four Messianic miracles were, I want you to write this down, they were number one, they're not in order of importance. These what were these were the four things that they believe. Messianic miracle. One is the cleansing of the leper. Number two, the casting out of a deaf and dumb spirit. Are you listening? Number three, it is the healing of birth defects of somebody being born blind. Are you listening? And number four, the raising of the dead after three days. The raising of the dead, of someone dead, uh, after three days. Are you listening now? So I want you to write this down. So in the mind of the Jews, the Pharisees, and the Sadducees, <clears throat> they had four signs known as Messianic signs that will indicate to them Allow them to identify that Messiah is in their midst. Messiah is in the flesh. And these four signs, known as Messianic miracles, number one was the cleansing of the leper. Number two was what? The casting out of a deaf and dumb spirit. Number three, the healing of birth defects, somebody born blind. And the raising of the dead after three days. Now, so now you've just read Matthew chapter 16. Is that right? So say, look, look, look at it again. Matthew 16, verse 1. Then the Pharisees also with the Sadducees came, tempting him, desiring him that he would show them a sign from heaven. Now let's keep on reading now. All right. <clears throat> he answered and said to them, When it is evening, you say, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning... It will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. O ye hypocrites, you can discern the face of the sky, but you cannot discern the signs of the time. I need you please to underline that. A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after sign, and there shall be no sign be given unto it, but the sign... Of the prophet Jonas. I want you please to underline that. The sign of the prophet Jonas. So they came looking for signs. And yet. That's in Matthew chapter 16. Back up now to Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. Look in your Bible. Matthew chapter 8. Ladies and gentlemen. Matthew chapter 8, <clears throat> and you will see something interesting here. And when he was come down, now watch this now, verse 1, Matthew chapter 8, verse 1 till verse 4. And when he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. Now look at verse 2. And behold, there came a what? A leper. Remember, Masonic miracle number 1 is the cleansing of the leper. And worshipped him, saying, Lord... If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was what? Cleansed. Now you understand what Jesus says in verse 4. 
And Jesus said to him, See thou, tell no man, but go your way and show yourself to the priest and offer up the gift that Moses commanded for a testimony unto them, for a sign unto them. Go show the priests, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, as a sign unto them. So when they came looking for sign, they already had a sign in Matthew chapter 8, and that was the cleansing of the leper. Are you listening to me now? They already had a sign, a messianic sign, that Messiah was in the flesh because of the cleansing of the leper, because when Moses instituted the law of cleansing from the time of Moses till the time of Jesus, no one, nobody ever went to the temple to be declared cleanse from leprosy. Are you listening to me now? So, they had a clear sign that Messiah was in the flesh due to the cleansing of the leper. But they did not believe. believe. All right, now, with that said, let's go, ladies and gentlemen, to, we're going to look at Matthew chapter 9, Verse 32, and then Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 9. We're going to read from verse 32. And they went out. Behold, they brought to him a man, a dumb man, possessed with a devil. And when the devil was cast out, the dumb spake. And the multitude marveled, saying, It was never so seen in Israel. Look at verse 34. But the Pharisees, the Pharisees, seeing the miracle and the sign, said, He casteth out devils through the prince of devils, through Beelzebub. All right? Now, uh, let's go to Matthew chapter 12 and look at verse 9. Look at verse 9. <clears throat> We're going to read verse 9 till verse, uh, let's read verse till verse 24. And when he was departed, he went into the synagogue. And behold, there was a man which had his hand withered. And they asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath days that they might accuse him? I want you please to underline that in your Bible. All right. The Pharisees also were accusers. Okay, and he said to them, What man shall there be among you that shall have one sheep, and if it fall into a pit on the Sabbath day, will he not lay hold on it and lift it out? How much then is a man better, better than a sheep? Wherefore it is, it is lawful to do well on the Sabbath days. Then saith he to the man, Stretch forth your hand, and he stretched it forth, and it was restored whole like the other. Then the Pharisees went out, and held a counsel against him that they might destroy him or kill him. Are you listening? Now, let's come down, ladies and gentlemen, to verse, let's go to verse 20, uh, 22. Then was brought unto him one possessed with a devil, blind and what? Dumb. Remember? Messianic miracle number two is one, what? Blind, born, blind, and what? Mute or dumb. And he healed him in so much that the blind and the dumb both spake and saw. And all the people were amazed. And look what it said. Is not this the son of David? This is why they call it Messianic miracle. This is why the people said this is the Messiah. But the, when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow does not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. So they had two Messianic signs in front of them. Are you listening? And they blatantly, deliberately refuse to believe. Then Jesus said to them, now look at this now, in Matthew chapter 16, right? Look at verse 4. Now, let's go back and read verse 3. 
And in the morning, you said, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. Or lowering, however you want to say. Oh, ye hypocrites, you can discern the face of the sky, but can ye not discern the signs of the time? A wicked and an adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. There shall no sign be given unto it, but the sign of the prophet, prophet Jonas. Well, Jesus said, as Jonah was three days and three nights. All right, three days and what? Three nights. Everybody say what? Three days and three nights in the belly of the earth. What is a scripture reference? All right, let's go that. Three days and three nights. Look in your Bible, please. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Matthew chapter 12, <clears throat> verse 40. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So, this is Messianic sign. Number three, someone being raised from the dead. Now, when we think of that, we always think of Lazarus, that on the fourth day Jesus raised him. That means after three days, are you listening? He had to be raised. But this sign, ladies and gentlemen, is referring to Jesus. He said, I've already given you two signs. And here's one pointed to you in the future as well. All right? <clears throat> I will die. And after three days, I will rise again to let you know, and you will know. You can identify, I am Messiah. That's why in Matthew chapter 7, 27, look in your Bible, please. Matthew chapter 27. We've got to hurry up. We've got time. Amen. Matthew chapter 27, ladies and gentlemen. Look in your Biblions. Thank you, Lord. Now, this is after Jesus was... Uh, already died and crucified and died. The Pharisees, they came. Let's go to Matthew 27. Look in your Bible, please. Matthew chapter 27. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Matthew chapter 27, please. We are going to read <clears throat> from verse 62. Now, the next day that followed the day of the preparation, the chief priests and who? The Pharisees came together unto Pilate, saying, Sir, we remember that that deceiver said while he was yet alive, after three days I will rise again. That is a messianic sign. Command, therefore, that the sepulcher be made sure until the third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away and say unto the people, He is risen from the dead, so the last error shall be worse than the first. And you look at verse 66. So they went and made the sepulcher sure, sealing the stone and setting a watch. Are you listening to me now? Can you say Amen. But you know what happened after the third day? Jesus was raised from the dead. Can you say amen? So they had all the signs that would let them know that Messiah was in the flesh. But they chose not to believe. Now, because of time today, I want you to write this down. I want you to write this down. So what are the leaven of the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and Herod. So, I want you to write this down, please. Real quickly, and then tomorrow we will decipher it. All right. I want you to write this down. The level of the leaven of the Pharisees. I want you to write this down, please. Number one, it is legalism. Legalism. All right? They were very legalistic. Number two, hypocrisy. Hypocrisy. Number three, I want you please to write this down. Accusations. Accusations. Number four, I want you please to write this down. Unbelief. 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 So I've given you four things here. All right? About 
the doctrine, the leaven of the Pharisees. I want you to write this down. The leaven of the Pharisees are, number one, legalism. Right? <clears throat> and we will deal with that tomorrow. Number two, hypocrisy. Now, the word hypocrite today has a very strong connotation. But in the days of Jesus, yes, it had strong connotation. But a word for hypocrisy was an actor. An actor is somebody who portrays a role in public or on television, but privately lives a different life. So a, hip a hypocrite is somebody who has double lifestyle. He portrays one thing. He portrays holiness. And you will see all this in Matthew, uh, when we read Matthew 23 earlier on. But in his private life, he's something different. Number three, it is accusations. Accusations. Now remember, the accuser of the brethren is called Satan. The accuser of the brethren is called Satan. And number four, it is unbelief. Now, there's a difference between doubt and unbelief. There is a difference between what? Doubt and unbelief. I want you to please write this down. Doubt is based upon insufficient information. Let me say it again. Doubt is based upon insufficient information. Are you listening? If I was to tell you, hey, I can pick up a car. Well, you don't have enough information about me to be able to make a sound judgment whether I can pick a car. All right? So, your doubt is based upon insufficient information. But now you see me picking up a car, and I tell you I can pick up your car, and you refuse to believe. And you have the same exact car that you've seen me pick up. So unbelief is choosing not to believe in the midst of evidence. Doubt is based upon insufficient information and evidence. Unbelief is based upon, is choosing to believe, not to believe in the midst of information and evidence. And that's why the Bible tells you in the book of Hebrews that the Jews could not enter in because of their unbelief. They had all the signs, and yet they could not enter it because they, cho they chose not to believe. Are you listening now? So write this down. The doctrine, the leaven of the Pharisees is legalism, which is a killer, and that is rampant in the church world today. Hypocrisy, accusations, and unbelief. The Leaven of the Sadducees. I want you to please write this down. In one word. Now, they did not believe in angels and demons. Sadducees did not believe in angels and demons. They did not believe. Now, Pharisees believe in angels and demons. Pharisees believe in the afterlife. Sadducees did not believe in the afterlife. Sadducees did not believe in the resurrection. Are you listening? Whereas Pharisees believe in the resurrection. So, in one word, Sadducees were cessationist. Sadducees, the doctrine of the Sadducees, can be uh, <clears throat> summarized in one word, cessationism. The doctrine of the Pharisees can be summarized in one word, legalism. Are you listening? So, write this down. The to summarize the doctrine, the teaching, the dogma of the Pharisees, it is what? Legalism. The doctrine of the Sadducees is what? Cessationism. All right. And Jesus talked about the leaven of Herod. Now, Herod was a plant of the Roman government. He was not the rightful king. Are you listening? He was not the rightful king, but he was put there courtesy of the Roman government. Are you listening to me now? Are you listening to me now? 
So he was a proxy king, a proxy pseudo king. I want you to please write this down. The doctrine of Herod was that he was a proxy pseudo king, a plant of the Roman government, and he's the plant of worldliness and compromise. So we can put it this way. The doctrine or leaven of Herod is what? Proxy, pseudo government. All right. Write this down. It is secularism, secularism or worldliness. And it is compromise. It is compromise. You hear me now? I want you to write these things down. Because this is what we have to deal with. And this is still rampant today. It is rampant all around you. Legalism still rampant in the church today. We are saved by grace. And then after we are saved by grace, we think our sanctification will be by law. Are you listening? Then you have the Sadducees, which is which are the cessationists. And you've got a bunch of people today in the church world that do not believe in miracles, that do not believe in the supernatural. Are you listening? And then you've got the leaven of Herod which is what? A proxy pseudo-government, secularism, and compromise. Are you listening to me now? Can you say amen? Can you say amen? And so tomorrow we will deal with that in more details. But you need to understand these things. None of these are right. Legalism, cessationism, all right? And secularism is not right. This is why when people do not understand that, they do not understand what's going on in the world. Now, we've got a problem where the world has invaded the church. Now, the scripture says to us, Jesus said to us, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Now, what we've got now is that the secular has come into the church. Just like we've been given the Great Commission, the world also have been given the Great Commission. Our Great Commission is to go and preach the gospel and plant churches everywhere. Are you listening? But we've got it in reverse today where the Great Commission of the secularism has invaded the church. And this is why you have people today who are completely clueless because all they've been taught is the doctrine of the Pharisees or the doctrine of, of, of Sadducees and the doctrine of Herod. This is why you've got people, when they vote, they have no clue what they're doing because they've been drinking the Kool-Aid of Herod. They've been drinking from legalism, cessationism, and secularism and compromise. And God will not Put up with it. He's not coming back for a compromised church. Are you listening? He's not coming back for he's not coming back for a pseudo church. He's coming for a church on fire. Can you say amen? Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, my time is up for the day. So don't forget to be with me tomorrow. Let's not forget to share this message. Amen on your Facebook timeline. The Lord bless you. And don't forget that, that on Wednesday we will have prayer coach. We will pray with you live. And if you have any prayer requests, give it to us ahead of time. Send it to me. Amen. And we will pray for you on Wednesday. And remember, if you are not a partner with us already, we encourage you to become one of our faithful and financial partners. Partners that sow into the ministry, sow financial seed 
into the ministry. We need your help. 502, call 502-523-4407 or go to glenorecion.org forward slash partner. Amen. As, as you know, this week I'll be in California. And after California, amen, I will be in Maryland. After Maryland, I'll be in Nigeria. After Nigeria, I will be in uh, Asia. Amen. Pray for me. The Lord bless you. We love you. We honor you. I look forward to be with you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye-bye.